Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. In this week's video, I'll be concentrating on the Tangle Hollow Bar and we'll be using a negative painting technique to create this 3D effect. For this video, you could use a Zentangle Phi tile, but I've cut one out of this watercolour paper and the size is 5 inch by 3.1 inch. I won't be using any pens today, but I will be using some watercolour paint, some water paint brushes and just a normal pencil. Before we begin painting, I've mixed up a few colours. These are the colours that I've chosen. Of course, you could use whatever colours you like. I want to start off with the colours fairly watery, so I'll test them out first on a piece of scrap paper. I've taped my paper to a non-porous board and now I'm going to use my thick brush to just wet the entire surface. Now for the fun part. I'm going to cover that entire surface randomly using all of the colours I've mixed. If your paper gets too wet and forms puddles, you can always soak some of the paint up with your paintbrush. As I was letting this dry, I accidentally got some drips, so I went over it with other colours, and so it's dried a little bit differently than it looked before. Using my pencil, I'm now going to draw some parallel lines to start off the hollow bar pattern. I'm not going to do too many at this stage and I don't want to draw any overlapping at this point. One more and that's quite enough for this first layer. Now I'm going to wet one section at a time with clear water, then go back to those colours that I've mixed and just drop them in like I did on the initial layer. Let that layer dry completely 
and then once it has I can come back in and draw some more lines. This time they will be overlapping. Back to our paint and we'll repeat that process all over again. It's really important that you let the whole thing completely dry before you add another layer. And while I'm waiting for that layer to dry, I'm going to just thicken my paints a little bit so that the pigment is stronger. It will be getting darker as we start to recede into the background. draw in some more lines and it's getting a little bit more difficult to find places where they'll go. We don't need too many and just put them randomly.
on this next layer I'm just going to apply paint directly to the paper I'm not adding the water first and because I've wet the paper with the actual paint I can still drop other colors on top you'll find that the spaces in between our lines are getting smaller and smaller And one last layer, we only need a couple of lines here and there. If you make any little mistakes, you can always erase the pencil lines. For my final background layer, I'm just going to mix these three darker colours together just to and add one dark colour in the background. I've made a little mistake here with my painting, but watercolor is fairly forgiving. So if I wet my brush, I can just blot it with a tissue and mistake undone. I can go back and just neaten up some of those lines a little bit by wetting my paintbrush and just softening the edge a little bit. Once your painting is completely dry you can remove the tape which is always a satisfying thing to do. I love to see that white line appear. You can leave your painting as it is or if you like, you can sort of define the areas a little bit more, either using watercolour pencils 
all coloured pencils and I have my coloured pencils out so I'm just looking at my swatch chart to find some colours that will blend easily. These are actually Prisma colours and I've selected these few coloured pencils to help me just neaten this up a little bit. If you're using watercolour pencils then you'll be able to soften them up using water and they'll blend quite easily. You might find with coloured pencils you get a little bit of a textured surface and I'll show you how I can deal with that in a moment. By adding this extra pencil you can emphasise little shadows that might be sitting behind each of the layers as if you would if you were using your pencil and tortillon. I'm now going to use this Derwent Blender Pen to soften up that pencil texture. And you can see it just melts the pencil into the background. Of course, if you've used watercolour pencils, water in a paintbrush will do the same thing. If you don't have one of these pens, you could always use some odourless blending fluid and a tortillon or cotton bud. And there's the finished results. If you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. If you'd like to post your work in my Facebook group, there's a link below this video. Thank you for watching and until next week, stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos, head over to my YouTube channel, or there are a couple of links here on the screen, and there's the subscribe button.